definitely have to have a four-wheel drive vehicle in order to safely get around. Can you see cars that are still, that are kind of stranded? Developing now, snow and ice continue to blanket western Washington, creating chaos from the roads to the airport runways. The treacherous conditions on some side streets are so bad, some neighborhoods say they're cut off from the rest of the world. Cumbo's Michelle Esteban live tonight in Lake Forest Park with a winter mess drivers in the North Sound are having to deal with. Michelle? Well, hi there, guys. You know, it really is that compact snow and ice that's the issue, but then couple that with what happened overnight, we got more snow. And so that means all the primary streets are the priority, not these secondary streets. And it does have some residents feeling stranded, and it has some counties and communities asking their residents to consider working from home. And if they do go out, limit their driving. From crunch cars stranded on the side of the road to... Okay. What? Stuck cars in the middle of the street. Go, 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 go. Blame it on the snow, ice, and then more snow, coupled with some freezing temps. A challenging combination for any side street, especially the ones that haven't seen a snow plow. I haven't seen anything yet. Lake Forest Park's John Kopinik has been waiting since Sunday. It certainly would help. Every year they just come when they come. But what they have hit are the primary roads. But here in Lake Forest Park, they shut down City Hall today. And they've asked residents in an online post to limit their driving. They say while crews continue to work hard, salt and sand are in limited supply. and can't be spread on all the city's roads. And on top of that, throughout neighboring Snohomish County, another warning. The overnight snow means those secondary streets have to wait even longer. Snohomish County Public Works says that's because they have to replow the primary roads, essential for first responders. Since Sunday, they've plowed 30,000 miles of roadway. I hope the, the city send us the, the truck with a shovel. Can you see cars that are still, that are kind of stranded? Allison King and her son Gabriel say the only way they can get out is with four-wheel drive. And because the hills are so treacherous to drive... We chose this road because it was it was not plowed, um, and it is icier, and so it makes it fun for recreation, not great for driving. And those who do try to venture out on the side streets may find themselves like Javin Wallace. He didn't get far. He lost control on a side street. He says it dislocated his tire. I'm not very good at driving in snow, and I was pumping my brakes. Because I thought, that's what you do. You No, that's not what you do. You gradually push on the brakes. Uh, Mary, this rough weather is certainly playing a role, but staffing, that is also a big issue. And some major airlines, they don't have enough pilots or flight attendants to keep the planes on the go. Holiday travel is on hold for so many of these airline passengers who are struggling to reach their destinations. Cancel flights, trying to book another flight. We came to the airport, and while my husband and I were getting ready to board our Delta flight to Vegas, um, it got canceled. The snowstorm created extra work for airport crews who had to plow the runways and de-ice the planes. All travelers could do is wait. As you can imagine, it's been pretty difficult because this is a packed airport, really packed, and these lines are long. A little surprised that the lines are as long as they are. But, hey, it, it's holiday season. It's what you expect. Some airlines are also woefully understaffed for the post-Christmas rush because the Omicron variant led to a rash of sick calls when pilots and flight attendants were needed most. This ticket counter at Alaska Airlines had only two employees to process hundreds of people standing in line. There are weather delays, which are understandable, but to not have the staffing at this time of year. According to FlightAware, SeaTac Airport had 277 flights canceled on what is predicted to be the busiest travel day of the year. Another 454 flights at SeaTac were delayed. Yes, I missed my flight, and then I booked one for two days from now, and now I'm trying to catch another one if I can. People say what's most frustrating is the airlines seem overwhelmed and unable to help passengers who are counting on them. Tried online, nothing available, called in, and I was on hold for two hours and then the phone hung up. So I called back. They said, if you want to call back, I did that. And then it wouldn't let me, it never called me back. Winter weather out there. Yeah, we sent a photographer by the zoo this afternoon to see how some of those animals were up to or what they were up to with all the snow on the ground out there. Looked like they're enjoying it. The zoo had a delayed opening today due to the winter weather.
All right, well, Shannon's in the Weather Center to describe the, the latest batch of snow headed our way. Yeah, we've got another round of lowland snow expected as we head into the next 36 hours or so. Uh, mostly just some light flurries falling out there right now, but that cold air, it is going to re-intensify as we head into our overnight and into our Wednesday. It is an iced-over winter wonderland. It looks like we're living in a snow globe around here. Gorgeous picture of the Cascades is captured by David there, and boy, it just looks more like we're in the Swiss Alps than our usual views around here, not just because we have the snowy mountains, but also because it is snowy all the way down to the base, of course. Frigid temperatures still in place. We did thaw out a little bit better today, added about five, six degrees to the afternoon highs, but most of us still not able to climb out of the upper 20s. And now, as we spoke about a few minutes ago, the Fraser River Valley winds are going to pick up again overnight, gusting 25 to 50 miles per hour across the Canadian border, and that ensures that cold air really has a firm grip on us by tomorrow before the next round of lowland snow arrives early on Thursday. Right now, look at the Emerald City. You can see this white uh, covered building landscape here as far as the eye can see. Beautiful Christmas lights there still in place downtown as well. And temperatures just in the mid-20s on a quiet Tuesday evening here in western Washington. Just a few flurries, most of which have been flying today from the coastline through the Willapa Hills. A couple of snow showers outside of Oakville and back toward Montesano tonight, but certainly nothing terribly heavy. And this is the last of this round of snow at the moment. Temperatures mainly 20s for the sound, but you can see Bellingham still stuck back at 17. Snoqualmie Pass one degree cooler at 16. And again, those gusty winds starting to howl across the Canadian border late tonight. Future cast shows that after the cold air takes place via those winds tomorrow, we have more precipitation that will ride in on top of that frozen tundra here as we head into Thursday morning, picking up quickly over the Olympic Peninsula through the Strait and San Juans and into the Cascades by early Thursday. There you see as we're waking up and getting ready for the sun to rise. It's snowing at a good pace at that point around Seattle and Tacoma and Olympia. So for the Thursday morning commute, it looks snowy. And then the snow quickly pushes into the Cascades by that Thursday afternoon. So it is a quick moving disturbance, but in its wake, we will have picked up another couple of inches of lowland snow. Most of us in the neighborhood of one to three inches, but you can see much more significant snow expected for Snoqualmie Pass that day. So overnight tonight, still a lot of compact snow and ice on our roadways. When you drop into the teens and the 20, 20s after dark, you know that the roads aren't going to improve much. And again, we've got that round of Fraser River Valley winds again taking over overnight. So notice how that keeps temperatures back into the 20s to near 30 for Bremerton and back into Silverdale and Bellevue tomorrow too. Gusty, especially before about 9, 10 o'clock in the morning around the San Juans and back into Linden and Ferndale. Northeasterly gusts there between 25 and 50 miles per hour for wind chill readings just in the single digits, if not into negative territory. Still mid 30s at the beaches, a few spots there, including Long Beach, at least above freezing for a few hours. And not not so much in eastern Washington, mainly low teens there around Wenatchee and back toward Lake Chelan. Extended forecast again, cold and gusty tomorrow, and then that lowland snow takes over again on Thursday. Won't be much, just a few inches by the time Thursday morning is a wrap, but enough to coat the roadways again and freshen up some of that crusty snow that's been all iced out over out there again the last couple of days. And then Preston and Mary as we head toward New Year's Eve, quiet that night, a mix of rain, snow and sleet as we kick off 2022 on Saturday. Yeah, so, so many industries have been squeezed by staffing shortages, hotels, restaurants, retail, and some people believe that the new CDC uh, guidance will give them a little extra breathing room. It's a game changer. There's hope for the hotel industry. The general manager of Travelodge by the Space Needle says the new CDC guidance to shorten isolation times from 10 days to 5 is good news. We welcome it. Staffing shortages have hit hotels and many other businesses hard. And now when workers call out sick because of COVID-19, the staffing crunch becomes even more serious. It takes a toll on the, the workforce when you're out of, uh, well, originally it was 14, now it's 10. So hopefully the five will make it a little more manageable from the aspect that we need the people to come in and help serve our guests. In Seattle's Belltown neighborhood, Tavolata is one of 25 restaurants in the Ethan Stoll Restaurant Group. Steve Hooper Jr. says times have been exceptionally tough for restaurants, first dealing with staffing shortages and now dealing with people calling out sick. In the first uh, 21 months of the pandemic, uh, we had about a dozen COVID cases across our restaurant group. 
In the last two weeks, we've had more than that. There are typically 12 to 14 people on staff at Tavolata. Hooper says losing one or two employees can really hurt. Restaurant leaders stand behind the new CDC advice to shorten isolation time. There was a genuine sigh of relief. Uh, across the group that folks could get back to work more quickly based on science and guidelines. Other industries may also see a big boost from the new CDC guideline changes. This will help, as you've seen from the healthcare to the airlines, uh, staffing is in high demand. So by keeping the workforce in place with a smaller quarantine period helps us make our lives easier and our guests' lives easier. Hey everybody, I'm Eric Johnson from Como News. Thanks for checking out the Como YouTube channel. You can see more of our videos right here by clicking on the video links for more news from the Seattle area and all of Western Washington. And don't forget to click the subscribe button below 